Hey, what's up guys, it's Mark here back with another video. Today I wanna to talk to you about making fonts. Uh, I know that a lot of you guys are always asking me about how I actually make the font and stuff like that and I promise you I am working on some tutorials about creating fonts. Uh, I promise you it is coming but there's something else that I wanted to talk to you about before you even make the font because I think there's sort of a common issue with the alphabet. Um, there's, I think there's, you know, when it comes to making a font, I think that actually compiling the font and doing the kerning and stuff like that in the font software, that's actually the easy part. I know a lot of people think that that's the really important skill they have to learn to make a good font. But really the the biggest issues I ever see with fonts that people are sending me and stuff that they're making is that the alphabet is wrong or you know it's it's got some like really critical flaws in it that are really easy to avoid. So I think that is something that we should cover first in a video before I get stuck into actually building a font. Uh, also I apologize if I look like absolute rubbish right now. We're currently in the middle of a terrible heat wave here in Queensland. Um, as usual, about 300 days a year. It's disgustingly hot, so I'm currently dying, but I wanted to make a video about this, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Alrighty, so enough talking, now let's actually get stuck into doing some drawing and working on a font. So, the thing that is absolutely the most critical in any font, in my opinion, is consistent letter forms. Uh, and what I mean by that is that all of your letter forms should have something in common. And basically the way that we ensure that is, that is you know, maintained is by actually replicating and duplicating parts of the font. So for this example, I'm gonna draw basically an alphabet uh, using just, just sort of like a, a typical uppercase block letter style because that's really the basics of where we should be starting, I think. So I'm gonna do all uppercase and I'm gonna show you how I would draft an alphabet. So the first thing I would do is I visualize a rectangle, I guess, of where my letter should sit. So this is where you decide, okay, do I want the, these letters to be quite tall and narrow, you know, condensed or short and wide, that sort of thing. So let's just say that I have this rectangle here. I'll just sort of roughly sketch this in for now. So all of my, well, just about all of my letters should, should conform to, to this shape. Obviously there's gonna be some exceptions. The letter I, for example, is very thin. W, for example, is quite wide. So we will need to do some different things there, but that's fine. So now I, I kind of imagine that all of my letters sit inside this. So I'm gonna just sort of roughly sketch a line somewhere in the, in the middle. I'll just say it's there. When you're actually designing the font, I would recommend using you know the pen tool and, and shapes and stuff to get these guides all perfect. But this is sort of how the thought process of it works anyway. So if I were gonna work on a block letter A, we'll start at the start of the alphabet. Uh, this is how I would draw it. I would decide how thick do the, do the lines in the A need to be. So if I imagine that this is my center line, I'm gonna go a little bit to the left of it. In fact, sorry, I'll just quickly change it to a different color so it's easier to see. So I would go, this is my center line. I'm gonna go a little to the left and a little to the right and that's the width of my A straight away. I'm gonna take this bit here and draw a straight line down to this corner here. So if I just kind of sketch in a line to that corner, then I'll take my line on the right hand side over here and basically draw it in so that it's about the same width uh, as, as the, the gap at the top there. So I'll just kind of roughly sketch that in, close it off. Now for the other side, um, assuming that our rectangle is symmetrical, mine's a little bit off because I sketched it, but that's fine. We're gonna do the same thing. So this one now needs to come to here. So a quick sketch, just kind of roughly etch that in. And same thing on this side. Okay. Cool, um, and I'll just sort of quickly roughly fill that in a little bit. Okay, so if, we st if we've done this correctly, then uh, we should have uh, a symmetrical A. Now, we've now determined that the width of, of these legs, if you will, should be consistent across everything in the alphabet. So instead of redrawing every letter in the alphabet, we should recycle some of these shapes where we can. That way we've basically guaranteed that things are gonna be consistent. Now you'll notice that I haven't done in the crossbar yet, and the reason for that is, if I take this A, and I'll just duplicate it real quick, and drag it over here. If I flip this upside down, you'll notice that I've already got the, the V as well, which is great. And then 
I can also duplicate this V and I can incorporate that into a W a bit later on. So that's the that shape taken care of. I'll now just choose to put in a crossbar here, remembering to keep it about the same width as these um, uh, upper strokes as well. Cool. So now that that's taken care of, I'll just move that to the side. Now the A doesn't have too many letters that we can recycle it into, um, but I wanted to start from the start of the alphabet. So next we could draw B. Uh, I'd also like to just draw the I real quick because we can recycle this into pretty much every letter in the alphabet. So again, I'm gonna just use the center line and try and draw a shape that's about the same width as uh, we did with the A. So I'll just kind of draw it in here. Again, if you were going to do this in Illustrator or something, you'd want to use some guidelines or and you know draw some rectangles and stuff to get everything nice and consistent. But this is the way the, the initial sketching process looks for me. So I've got this eye here now. Uh, this is super handy because I'm going to need it for pretty much everything. I'm just going to put it on a separate layer. So let's say that we wanted to do the letter B. I could easily grab duplicate of this eye, shift straight into the edge here. I've already taken care of that. I'm going to need it for the D as well. T, R, you know, there's so many letters in the alphabet, K, that they're all pretty much all going to use that I. So now that by just duplicating that over and over again, I have just made sure that all my letters are at that same consistent weight, which is really, really important. So now let's sort of step it up a bit. Now I'm going to draw the B. So if I was going to draw the B, uh, I would want the sort of horizontal stroke here to be the same thickness as the upstroke. So I'm going to kind of have to plan out here. Okay, so I'd want another one in the middle somewhere and another one at the bottom. Then I want need to plan out roughly how far out I want it to come. Uh, going all the way to the edge would be a bit overkill at this point uh, because the A is quite narrow. So I would probably say we're going to have to have it somewhere out here. Um, and depending on the style, if you want, the bottom bowl could be further out than the top one or, or, or bigger. So now I'm going to just start connecting some of these lines in. And then I'll just fill it in, have a quick look at it. Okay, cool. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's just a rough sketch, obviously, uh, but that's looking pretty good, pretty consistent. I'm going to just get rid of this rectangle now because I probably won't need it for a while. So now that I've got the B, now we get to really start increasing our productivity. I'm going to duplicate, oops, sorry, I'm going to duplicate the B. I should name my layers. So check this out. If I duplicate this B and I'll just bring it over here, I can simply grab the eraser and just remove this bottom bowl. Technically, I could have just drawn the P first, mind you, but anyway, there you go. Now I've already got the P there taken care of. Um, I could do some similar stuff with the letter D there too, so I could duplicate that B, bring it down here, erase this midsection here, and just sort of add some more weight in here. So now I have the D shape. I could duplicate the P, which I'm going to, I'm just going to rename my layers real quick. I always get too excited when I make my videos and then I don't name my layers and then I embarrass myself on a video like this. Okay, so now I'm going to grab that P again, duplicate that over here. Now I can very easily think about this R too, you know, where do I want it to sit? So that's a bit awkward at the moment, I think, but anyhow, that'll do for now. Rename that to R. Now if I grab the P again, I'm gonna bring this one over here, and I can also simply just erase this section here. And I pretty much have the F now, which is awesome. Um, and I would usually do the middle bar a bit thinner like that a bit shorter rather I should say uh, what I should have done what I would normally do actually is duplicate the B um, because then you can get the E whoops 
from the B here I can get the E and then from the E I would usually duplicate the E to get the F actually but you know I've, I've done it now so that's fine so as you can see the you know with very little effort all I had to really draw was a couple of letters and it was really the B and the I uh, and I can just start duplicating those shapes and create you know a full alphabet in very little time so I won't bore you by drawing every single letter just yet uh, but I will show you another cool thing so you may be thinking well there's one type of letter that you've missed so far and that's the O and the U and, and stuff like that so and even the C mind you so we can use the D to actually create quite a lot of these so I'm going to simply duplicate this D twice because I don't want to affect the original I'm gonna take the top copy here and I'm just gonna flip it cool uh, I'll drop the opacity on one a little bit Cool, so I'm working on this one here. Now check this out, I'm just gonna erase away some of these edges. Then I'll do the reverse. Bump the opacity back up and I have pretty much got my O shape. So, whoops, so now if I just merge those two, I've got the O and then I can Grab that O, bring that across, then I can very easily get the U by simply erasing a section of, of that and you know extend the U up like that. So as you can see again, we can simply just recycle a lot of the shapes because that's that's really all it is, and that gives us most of our letter form. So now I, I did want to do the whole alphabet, but I was just thinking then some of you might watch this and think, well, that's all good, that's all well and good when you're working on like a block sort of style alphabet but you know there are like lots of other fonts lowercase and scripts and things like that but it's actually the same kind of process so let me let me show you some more examples so I'll just draw a quick guideline and let's look at a couple of script examples so if I just jump to another color again we'll go with blue this time so if we talk about a script alphabet a lot of these letter forms actually have a lot in common so for example the a b c and d all have some kind of circular sort of bowl shape to them so what we would do or what i would do in illustrator is actually draw this sort of circular shape like that and then duplicate it again just like we did before erase the midsection here and you have the c um, again, you could sort of flip it and tweak it to get the B. Um, this as it is would pretty much work for the, the D as well. Uh, then for a lot of these sort of vertical bars, we, we could basically just draw an L and then we can simply take that circular shape that we've made before and just attach it. Uh, and we've got the L here. So, you know, it, it's really the same sort of thing. The M would just be the N. Essentially, you grab the N and then just add an extra bit on the end of it there you know there's a lot of things we can recycle we can still use this C to create the E as well so all we have to do is add that extra section to it so uh, as you can see obviously these are just really really rough kind of primitive looking examples but if you're in Adobe Illustrator using the pen tool you only really have to draw a handful of different letters to you know get all of the different letters in the alphabet so again the same sort of thing applies with the G so with the G we've already got this A over here so we've already got that round section all I have to do then is do the, the actual D center and then I can simply duplicate that to use it for the Y as well so I could just erase this section extend it up I've got the Y and the reason this is so important is especially in a script font if you look at things if you look at a G and the D center has a different angle to the Y, it, it becomes really obvious and something just doesn't quite look right. So a lot of the time it has nothing to do with how well you've made the font. Uh, that part's really quite simple. It's usually a problem with the initial drawing of the letter forms that, that is you know causing most of your grief. And I've learned this the hard way myself. The J would also be the same, by the way. 
Um, the I as well, you know, if we wanted to draw this L, we could actually start with the I and then extend it or draw the L first and then just erase a section of it to get, you know, the, the general shape for the, the lowercase I as well. So again, you know, it really is just recycling and recycling and recycling. So, so yeah, I mean, I think that sort of covers most of the points that I wanted to get across. Uh, I think in a future video, I'll actually go into Illustrator and you know create a proper alphabet, and then we can go through turning that from start to finish all the way to a, a real font. Um, basically, the main reason I haven't made the font tutorials yet is because there's so many different programs that people are using. Um, I normally use Font Lab Studio, but I know a lot of people are using Glyphs on a Mac and stuff like that. So I'm trying to kind of find the best medium where I can make a font for you guys and we can go through it all together. But yeah, anyhow, I think that pretty much covers everything that I, I wanted to bring up. So I hope you guys found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this, by all means, ask away in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, it would be a huge help if you could give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much, guys, and I will catch you in the next video.